Thank you. Uh, hear me okay? Yep. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers and uh, Saudi Arabia for putting on an amazing con uh, conference. It's been going very well, uh, uh, I feel, uh, for the last few days. I'm here to talk about Nickel Creek Platinum and our project. This is the, uh, the normal advisors in terms of what we can and can't say. So why Nickel Creek Platinum? So Nickel Creek Platinum has the Nickel Show project, which hosts uh, the Well Green Deposit, which is one of the world's largest undeveloped uh, nickel copper sulfide with platinum group metals. Uh, we have extremely strong support from our Kiwani First Nation and the government in Canada's Yukon Territory, making us one of those unique safe mining jurisdictions, uh, which is a very investable uh, jurisdiction. Uh, Canada's Yukon Territory has excellent infrastructure and route to market. This is not uh, going to be a greenfield in the middle of nowhere. We actually have roads and power and different things uh, that are accessible for us. The key here for us is nickel sulfide deposits remain really the world's most environmentally friendly source of class one nickel supply. Um, for batteries and the new green economy, um, this is becoming more and more important as we move forward and you're hearing more and more about ESG and you're hearing more and more about uh, the carbon footprints. Uh, this is why these nickel sulfide deposits are an important part of the nickel moving forward. We have a large 146 square kilometer uh, land package uh, with uh, massive nickel sulfide targets uh, found along a, a really prospective uh, ultramafic 18 kilometer trend. Uh, which is actually where we uh, are doing all of our drilling. The other key thing for us is we've had uh, solid long-term backing from some large institutional shareholders. So very, very well backed. So we're talking about nickel and not many people in the, in the conference are talking about nickel. I think Mark Bristol was talking about copper as being his favorite. I'll be upfront, uh, my belief is nickel is actually the one that's uh, got the most potential of the, uh, of the elements. And uh, the main reason for that is uh, this, this came out of from, uh, from Tesla. Um, you know, they need to make 700, they have to have 750,000 tons of nickel to produce 20 million cars. And if you take a look at the projections across all of the different auto uh, industries, that's consistent. Uh, so really what's that mean? We need 50% more nickel by 2025 and we need to double by 2030. So doubling the nickel uh, supply is not something that is easily done. This is not something which you can just snap a finger and bring projects on. Nickel sulfide projects take anywhere from five to 20 years to develop. So this is a, a, a point in time where we're at unprecedented growth, uh, growth for the nickel industry. So how is Nickel Creek positioned to meet this? So we're a low-grade deposit. Uh, you know, less than 1% nickel is considered low-grade. There's many low-grade deposits around there. Uh, I mean, uh, BHP has been mining a low-grade deposit in, uh, in uh, Australia for, for 30 years at Mount Keith. Um, these are large open pit operations, 30 plus years. Uh, low carbon footprint. Uh, part of that is the tailings, what's called tailings uh, carbon sequestration. It's uh, the fact that the the mineralization of our tailings actually absorbs carbon dioxide. So that's one of the benefits of getting to a zero carbon footprint uh, with these deposits. The other one is that many of these projects are located in North America, where ours is located, which is uh, an area that is of uh, importance for meeting the US's latest uh, push to have critical metals uh, locally sourced and, and processed locally. So this is another advantage of uh, being located in North America. And we are capable of producing battery grade nickel. So we are not uh, strictly uh, uh, a, something that has to go into the uh, stainless, for instance. So Nickel Show is not just a nickel place, so that's why we call it, uh, you know, looking at the, the overall green, we have about 55% of our uh, values in nickel but we have a significant uh, uh, amount of platinum group metals. And you can see from our, uh, our, our numbers that we have 
850,000 tons of contained nickel, 500,000 tons of copper, some 50,000 tons of cobalt, and almost 5.8 uh, million troy ounces of platinum, palladium, and gold. So it's a significant endowment of, of uh, what we would consider byproducts to the nickel process. ESG, I've talked about it a lot. You're going to hear a lot more about it. Uh, we do have LNG as our primary uh, source for power. And we are in, the, pro in the, um, the process of looking at renewable power generation as well. These are all things that can help drive down the carbon footprint. We are looking, water is another critical element of all ESG policies. Um, in some parts of the world, it's even more critical. Um, we have a very good, strong water recycling policy. We also have done all of our environmental baseline programs since 2012, uh, which means that we are actually fully aligned for permitting. Uh, the carbon dioxide I've already talked about is absorbed by our tailings, and that's going to help us drive our, uh, our project to zero carbon. Social license is, is critically important. and. Within uh, the Yukon Territory, we have many different uh, First Nations. For us, Kluwani First Nation is our local uh, partner, and we have been working with, together with them uh, for, for many years. Uh, they're I, considered strong partnerships in the sense that we, we hire them and we work together on our future plans and strategies. Uh, the, these initiatives have been going on for quite, quite a few years. Governance, we have a very strong, well-diversified board uh, of governors, uh, uh, board of directors, and we have very strict guidelines within the TSX where we're listed in terms of our policies, et cetera. So this is not just about the one well grain deposit. We've got a really high, highly prospective 18-kilometer trend um, we've done extensive geophysics work on this, uh, done in 2019 and 2020. We've got a number of electromagnetic conductors that we, uh, we have found. And really, we have a, a fairly decent uh, drill hole and surface sampling database to, in order to uh, correlate it with our, our uh, geophysics results. And we've done very limited drilling, though, in general, outside of our well green, which means there's a lot of upside potential. And we are fully permitted for drilling. So in uh, 2021, we did an exploration program, 12 hills or 12 uh, drill holes, totaling 1,257 meters. And really, what our focus was was looking for near-surface uh, massive sulfide. And why you ask? Other than it's always good to get high nickel uh, massive sulfide, is that we're looking to find uh, lenses of. Uh, of um, starter pits, if is what we refer to them, in order to bring that early on into the project. That can significantly change the economics. So we're really just focusing on our near surface. We have other uh, potentials deeper, but at this point we're, we're focusing on the near surface. And we, had a, we intersected, uh, you can see from the, the results, anywhere from 1 to 4% nickel, 4.5% I think was our peak, uh, along with significant copper, and significant PGMs. And so this is um, an example of what we believe is going to be found on our property. This is not going to be the only uh, source of, uh, of this starter pit, but we have future work to be done in order to prove this out in terms of volumes and, and its overall impact on the project. So really, looking at the Nickel Show project, strong institutional shareholders, Updated resource with a, from, uh, measured and indicated. Um, we've got advanced metallurgy work has been done. Uh, we did a mini plant uh, test work that produced concentrates, both a copper concentrate and a nickel concentrate that, have been, uh, that are uh, suitable for sale. We've done our internal mine planning and optimization studies. In, in addition to that, we've done most of the uh, engineering towards a PFS. So I would say that we're pretty much PFS ready, other than we need to do some geotech drilling and a few more updated uh, studies to, uh, in order to complete our PFS. So the baseline environmental studies are in place. We're going to be able to move into permitting in a very uh, you know, quick manner associated with that. 
And this is an, a large exploration district uh, potential that we've already found uh, high-grade assets on, and we're looking forward to doing some more drilling in the coming year in order to prove out that uh, this is uh, an area that is going to be able to produce multiple high-grade uh, opportunities.